was sealed, and the Army of Tennessee was livid at Hood's promotion, with men deserting en masse. They believed Hood was too young. He was only 32 at the time. Senior leadership felt passed over and enraged. Hood was even surprised by this promotion himself. He desperately tried to salvage the situation and went to Johnson's tent, begging him to save the city of Atlanta. Johnson, who was packing up his belongings around... Johnson, who was packing up his belongings, said along the lines of, Sure, kid. And then he ran off into the countryside, never to be heard from again, leaving Hood to just defend the city. And Hood didn't even know where most of the cores were. Like, half his army, only Johnson knew where, where the soldiers were. So he was like, uh, Good luck, kid. You want to be in charge? Here you go. And he just left. Hood immediately took command and decided to try to hit Sherman before Sherman hit him. Hood decided to attack Sherman's right, where 50,000 Union soldiers were spread out. Hood planned to drive the Union back into Preacher's Creek. He wanted to hit a small, isolated part of the army, driving them into the river. Hood wanted to be on the offensive instead of defending earthworks. Hood despised defensive positions, thinking them to be cowardly. Hood committed two-thirds of his army and attacked in force, but the battle failed. Orders got mixed up, and the attack launched several hours later than it should have. General Thomas, aka the Rock of Chickamauga, was able to hold Hood back, who attacked five separate times to no avail. The only thing the Battle of Peters Creek accomplished was making Sherman tighten his lines. The following day, Hood pulled back to a tighter defensive line and ordered Hardy's Corps on a 12-hour night march around Sherman's left flank. Hood wanted Hardy to attack at dawn, but instead, Hardy attacked at noon. Now, this would be commonplace for a lot of the campaigns that Hood would command, that he would plan these ambitious flanking movements, but he was never able to execute it. And stuff like this would just keep happening. And I think this is one of the reasons why Hood failed in the end is that he was never on the pulse of his corps commanders. All the attacks, all the, all the planning never panned out because he was never there. It was so painful for him to ride his horse that he really just he could only command from paper. Like, like Stonewall Jackson, for example, he would do his own scouting. I mean, that's how he got killed. But every time he did a, a, want to execute a plan, he would be in the vicinity, and Hood never was. The attack almost worked, though, with Hardy's corps, but Sherman's men again held the field firing from defensive works and using artillery as cover, devastating the assaulting Confederates, who took some ground on fortifications but were inevitably thrown back. 8,000 Confederates lay dead, and nothing was gained but the loss of more vital Confederate manpower. The following week, nothing happened but silence. Hood figured correctly that Sherman was moving men right to the Mackinac Railroad that supplied Atlanta. Hood ordered General Stephen Lee to counter and set an ambush, then hold out till A.P. Stewart's corps arrived, who would attack on an unsuspected flank. Lee failed to follow Hood's orders and blindly stumbled into the Union getting into a savage brawl. With the third and final attack over, Hood ordered his men to retire to the defenses of Atlanta. Sherman then moved his army, leaving the defenses of the city, and attacked the railroad in force. With the fall of the Mackin Railroad, Atlanta was lost. Hood left the city as Sherman marched in. With the city occupied, Sherman ordered Atlanta to be evacuated, saying, war is cruelty, not a popularity contest. Hood and Sh 